just to do when I was young. You yeah, that's great, right. Fox. And I mentioned... <laughs> As I mentioned before, I think sometimes people underestimate the job of a director on a show like this, which is really a, what you call a winging show. We don't really have time, and he does a great job, and uh, I love him. Would you welcome my brother, Dick Carson? <laughs> can bump and move down one. Well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why Dick's in the booth. <laughs> did, did, did you hear the, uh, this is the first time you've been in this chair in almost six years. And it must be strange, really. Because it, it, it really is. is. To talk to a brother, you see each other in the office every day. Which they do. No, really. And now you're face to face. mind if I talk to him, Don? No. <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm just trying to pick up the pace because the morph is <laughs> Exactly skyrocketing. I often wonder why people choose in their career to step down. You know, when you've got a good thing going here. Uh, you know, it's comfortable. We're on every night. He's just telling me it's going on, you know. Fine, fine. Fine time. <clears throat> <laughs> My own brother. You see what's happening? He's only been with you a couple of weeks and already he's turning. Well, I give him kicks. <laughs> I don't come up with a salami sandwich and a mac. Hey, really? Are you salami? Are you looking forward to it, really? Very much so, yeah. Going out next week, and we're going to uh, get together with Pat McCormick. And yeah, he's got the big old thing. I know Pat's got lots of ideas already in line for Don. Oh, you'll, be, you'll be good for Don, really. Oh, and and uh, your brother will be one of our guests, which we're thrilled about, because <coughs> many people ask me, uh, you know, Johnny Carson was the first guy to put me on nighttime television, which is the fact. And I'm very proud to have Johnny as one of our guests. I'm sure Dick is, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. I also had passage on the Andre Doria. <laughs> Big deal. So we'll be right back after working at a local station. back in a moment with my guest, Mr. Dick Carson. <laughs> All right, we're back. Isn't this fun? Oh, it's great. Just to see you sit up there trying to figure out what to ask your brother. <laughs> it's not easy to interview your brother no, because we I know everything. talking during the commercial, we were saying, right, Lee? Right. Good, Lee. Jump in. <laughs> we were saying that it, it, when you have your own brother, you see him every day, and you talk to him, and you love him dearly, and you, all of a sudden you're on the air with him, and it's like a scramble... Egg time, you know, you don't know what to say to it. Scrambled egg Scrambled time. Egg. That, that you ever, didn't you ever go to a diner? No. Think of the poverty days when you were hanging around downtown L.A. going, Hello, anybody. <laughs> you know, don't forget, John, think of the poverty. And your brother's going to skyrocket, make more money than you, and we need a clerk. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is I, I don't even know what to ask you. You know what we did do? We uh, had that young fellow, Andy Mose, who runs a service called Trackdown. Uh, oh, looks that. into your past, and we checked into Dick's past. Dick married uh, a girl that he went to, uh, went with, what, the sixth grade in high school, right? Yeah. That's the only girl you'd really ever gone with, true? Oh. <laughs> well, that's what I got here on the card. No, it says you never had any other girlfriends. <laughs> okay. Well, you'll buy that. Was he alone a lot in his sandbox? Yes, he <laughs> making your brother a dummy. No, no. Girls. I know he likes girls. Well, what do you think he was before he met his wife? A priest? <laughs> <laughs> a man has girls. No, Dick is shy like I am, right? Oh, yeah. You're shy. Let Dick <laughs> answer. Let Dick, <laughs> let Dick say yes or no. Well, that's a buzzer. Dick, you're you know. putting him on a spot. Right away you made him a dummy that he doesn't know girls. I he knows think. a lot of girls. And we're fed up. He happens to think this. And I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, he's fed up with your wife. <laughs> Why? He's got to 
call up Joanne Why? and get his check. Why? Why did you take this job, Dick? <laughs> Dick, why? Have we been close? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've tried, haven't I? Right. <laughs> why? I mean, what? what is it? It can't be just California, can I? Can't it? No, he wants to go out and... I go. didn't ask you. I'm what are you He's spending him. He's sitting there with the pencil and he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> now, if you say that again, Liberace's going to do a tap number. <laughs> And I'll wheeze again. Wheezing along here, uh... Cut out, old-timer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got some pictures here. I got some oh, pictures oh, oh, oh. from Dick. From now, I want to show you. I'm sure it's great. Right? No, this is not the picture. These are kind of... Kind of hmm? Look, we'll just wait while you look for your no. <laughs> Here's a picture when we were kids, really. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of amusing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Look at that. That's me. We've, we've been fishing. Do you believe that? How old were how you, how old were you there, John? I was about, I guess, ten. Did must have been. You know, got everything there, sir. What, what do you mean? Better fish? Yeah. Well. Hmm. <laughs> okay. What, what does more. that mean? No, seriously. What uh, does that mean? Sure. Why, he was always with the no, sport? He got the fish. No. Oh, always on the fish? That, that's another These are from, uh, from when you were. Uh, he was an actor. Which one's you? Oh, he was voted the best actor at uh, the University of Nebraska. Uh, true. Look at him standing there. Uh, Listen, I don't know what this play was. That is, that's you in the middle. Look at this one. With the sword. And what, what was that? Antigone? That's Jerry Stevens. You Wait, played Julius? No, I don't know. You played Caesar? Yeah, I played Brutus. Uh, you played the guy with the sword. Look for him. <laughs> Just roll right along, John. Well, I thought people would be interested in me. We are. You notice how the crowd's standing up? <laughs> well, what's that from? <laughs> that's the same play. That's, Cleo, that's Shaw's uh, Cleopatra. And uh, I had a small part in that. I thought you played uh, Julius Caesar. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. Oh. What are you making of the test? It's not a test. It's not a test. Just show the pictures. Don't interview it. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came on the show oh, tonight? This is, uh, this is a treat for all of us. <laughs> show the one you nude in the shower. <laughs> Trying to sink the soap. <laughs> sink the soap? I don't know what all those are, but those are kind of nostalgic. That's actually, yeah. That's Charlie Sam. Oh, I thought it's two guys in Coney Island trying to make a move. <laughs> I don't know why I brought you out here to be either. subjected to this. No, it's nice to see a no. brother. And I, and I say this from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. Have you got a place to live yet in California? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> you seem to be getting some reverberation from the studio upstairs. Uh, no, uh, Dick has uh, two, two boys and uh, a youngster, Kathy. Daughter. A daughter. And, uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> And I say, Kathy, I presume it's a daughter. Mm. And, and your wife, his wife is here tonight. That's right. Pat, 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 Pat Worth, stand up, take a bow, Pat. Really? Like, way over on the far side. I don't know if you can get a shot of me. Oh, where's Pat? Where's Pat? Pat? There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There You know, she looks so different from the old days. Remember when you danced to Night Train? <laughs> oh, one thing. You always hold that against somebody. <laughs> right. One little dance. One little dance she did at Night Train. She's a big deal. Girl. Yeah, that's a nice girl. Did you ever have Joanne on the show? Your wife? You Joanne. remember Joanne, the wife? Yes. Good. <laughs> Joanne was on the show one night, really, with Steve Lawrence when I was off. Yeah, you never uh, were together. Well, you'd have probably... No, we were, on, no we were on the show together one night, right after we were married. Mm. Uh, she was on the show and mm. been in the audience a couple of times. Mm. But, uh, hmm? Mm. I'm just sitting here. It's your show, pal. Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> Later on, Dick, you do a half gainer off the desk to keep Johnny awake. We're going to do a sketch yeah. right after this. Why? I Why? don't know. I don't know, but sure. it's a biggie. It's a biggie. I hope so, John. We're going to be right back after this <laughs> message of interest. One of the searing questions in the political campaign this year is the urban crisis. With crime and violence on the rise, there seems to be a lack of involvement on the part of the average citizen. 
In fact, police will say that the average citizen will actually stand and let an act of violence happen. Tonight, we're going to test that as we pick up an average citizen waiting for a bus in a large city. Help me, help me. You gotta help me. There's a man after me. He's trying to kill me. He grabbed my purse, had my life savings in it. He's only a teenager. You can hook him in a minute. Help me. You gotta help me. I'm sorry, madam. I don't want to get involved. Now, there's a police station right down here on the hill. Go down to the right. You gotta gotta help me. I don't. You gotta. Tommy 
se cae y mata y no me y no me llega cae a cerero. I just saw them. I hope his mule dies. Thanks, John. I'll be at Lou's Fish Market a week from Wednesday, and then I'm working the wonderful farmers market smelling cheese for two nights. By the way, uh, two. Uh, one of those little horses, what do you call those little horses? Quarter horses. Quarter horses. Two of them were shot while you were playing the trumpet. <laughs> How are you, nah. Joan? God bless you. This is a lovely outfit, and I know you always get... You with the dentist? <laughs> anyway, uh... No, it's very pretty. You, you were kidding yourself about it, and yeah. Well, yeah. I wanted you to know this is a lovely outfit. Suck on my neck, just to relax. <laughs> Everybody has been saying to me, Don Rickles, Don Rickles, you're the Donnie Marie of meanness. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think, you know, I think you're a sweet, good man. What do your friends say when they... <laughs> well, you're a fool if you think I'm a <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not that kind. You know, in our business, we, we do what, I, what we do. You do your thing, I do mine. Oh, only I happen to love Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, but... Uh, 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 not a word. You know what the whole one Elizabeth you, you, you know do the... one Elizabeth Taylor joke. No, no, I don't do jokes. You know that. Sure. I talk about people. I, 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 I'm honest. I don't like him. <laughs> but, uh, I don't make a thing about it. You know what I mean? Johnny Carson's not here, and we both can be very honest. <laughs> I think you can handle it better, as you told me. <laughs> uh... Hey, the woman came in my dressing room and said, Don, you and I are friends. Don't I handle this show much better? I said, absolutely. Absolutely, and dummy here went, I, 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 I just played a trumpet. Uh, and Ed McMahon's at home in his underwear going, <laughs> That's Bobby Quinn's son. He writes down everything to tell the little director. See, everybody's off when, you do, when you're on the show. You know that, so that's a vote of confidence. The regular crew takes off, and they bring in all the guys that are learning. <laughs> Freddie isn't even... Oh, yes, there he is. Freddie, the covered the covered the keep it up. <laughs> He's the wonderful producer that keeps saying, you're marvelous, Joan, it's lies. It's all lies. <laughs> you know you don't like her either. Why do you lie to her for crying out loud? <laughs> no, he loves you. You do a magnificent job, and I kid you. And does the jewelry go back in an hour? <laughs> anyway. As a, as a matter of fact, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How have you been? I'm delighted for your success, yeah, really. Well, we know each other a long time. Yeah. Your husband, her husband, Edgar, is in the hall now saying, you, give me $5, I'll park your car. <laughs> uh, you really love Edgar, don't you? Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's a wonderful guy. He's about four foot one, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Walks around the hall going, I'm a beaver. <laughs> He's a, he's a nice guy. We've been friends a lot of years. Yes. Not that many years. No, We've we been have. acquaintances. No, the great thing is, which they see, is when your wife, when your wife, when yes. you as yes. the wife, and, well, you know, as the host, I keep thinking yes. as a man, because we always assume it should be a man, you know. As you said to me many times, it should be you instead of her. <laughs> There's not a friend here. They give you all that baloney every night going, Joni, darling, Joni, baby. And Johnny hired you because he knows you're no threat. Uh... <laughs> See, a woman to a guy like Johnny Carson, he's got six billion dollars. He's sitting now in Malibu Beach, running around in his jockey shorts going, how's the body look? How's the body look? <laughs> you and I know it's over. The body is wrinkled God. and it's over. You know. <laughs> right, you Doc? Exercise? That's right. Well, why don't you jump in and be a man and say it? <laughs> <laughs> message of interest. So please, stay tuned. <laughs> I'm so glad you are. Hi, Don Nichols. Now, you look very best. You went away with friends. Your good friends are uh, Steve Lawrence. You're very good friends. Yeah, it was Steve Lawrence and Bob Newhart. Steve and I are doing a little project now, but we don't mention it's on another network, but we're having a, a ball of a time because Steve's great. He keeps saying, you want to hear me sing? And I step on his album. <laughs> But, uh, and we went to Hawaii for Christmas and New Year's. Will you work on Christmas and New Year's? Yeah, I work anytime I can. I know you do. Bless your heart. I, I don't, I got a, I got a low-key wife. She's the one that keeps saying, again with entertaining. <laughs> uh, she thinks I should work in a candy store and just sit there and think, chocolate, vanilla, or something not too sweet. Anyway, uh, she's, she's great. You know the type, on the wedding night, just laid there and went, ha, 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 you're married, right, Doc? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Happily? Sure. Uh, no, I'm sure you are. <laughs> she probably gets up in the morning and goes... 
<laughs> but we went to Hawaii, Joan. Do you, do you ever take vacations? Yes, we just took one. Yes, we, we saw each other in Lake Tahoe, and yes. you told me at Harris, which is another yes. of our favorite spots, both of us. Yes. And I work in the Sahara, and you work in Lake Tahoe a great deal, and you work, now you're working at Caesars. It's anywhere. Your, no, your career is... A buck's a buck. Hey, I, I gotta be honest. I am the strip slut in Vegas. They <laughs> want me, I move to the different hotels. But you know why? You have a great drive. I have a, a desire to get on the couch. That's my big dream. Just lay on the couch. My manager, Joe Skindor, he's not here tonight. Uh, he, unfortunately, he's at a rally to hurt somebody. Uh, he's Italian, and he just sits around Brooklyn going, oh, Bravo! Bravo! And there's nothing going on. Uh, but you say that, and tomorrow you're going to see me with a limp. Uh, but I must say... Uh, you don't like to work? It's not a question of not liking. I love... The life of, of leisure, of playing golf. I'm not a good golfer. Freddie DeCoveta, DeCoveta. Your producer's a marvelous golfer. I, I love golf. Newhart's a great golfer. Steve Lawrence is a guy that plays golf, but he's not, the, you know, he has that kind of rhythm. He hits the ball pretty good. But we went to Maui uh, this past Christmas and New Year's, and all we did was play golf, make love to the wives on our terms. What is that? Uh, no, they, they stood on the course and go, when? When? And, uh, and, and Steve yelled, never, never. I didn't yell that. I was hoping somebody else would. But, uh, no, that's not true, darling. I do love you. <laughs> My luck, she'll be in heat tonight, and I'm tired. Anyway, uh, are you allowed to say heat on television? Oh, three guys just went, you can't say heat, you can't say heat, you can't say that. <laughs> but, uh, so far, Joan, you've been a big help to me. Uh, when you go to Hawaii, from vacation, did you take your kids? Because we have children in the city. No, no, I took giraffes. <laughs> uh, whenever I go on vacation, I take two giraffes with me. No, I take my son, who is 13, and I take my daughter, who is 17, that just stands in front of the mirror. I don't know if your daughter, my daughter wants to be an actress. Is, oh, does your, your daughter daughter's have... very pretty. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Is, is, is well, your mine's daughter... a little younger, but she wants to be, I think, a rock star. Yeah, well, my son loves the, the Sting and Duran Duran and Police. Culture and, club? Yeah, and in fact, he came home one night, and his face was green, and he went, wow, wow, wow! <laughs> and I said, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> it's the new thing. That's why I'm looking forward to it. Have you done Saturday Night Live? No, I did it last year. I loved it. Well, well I'm, gonna, oh, I'm it's looking great forward fun. to doing it. You've I'm, never done it? Never, never. I only did it once, the way I'm talking. Well, I've never done it, huh? No. <laughs> puff, puff. No, but it, it should be. <laughs> oh, puff, puff, the shipment came in. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> I saw two guys from Columbia standing in the hall going, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> anyway, no, that, that's terrible with drugs and so forth, you know, because you hear about that so much. Guff of it, uh, kids should keep away from that. But I, I, I must say, because when I go down to Florida, I, even my mother, uh, bless her heart, she's in, she, by the way, may I say hello to her? She's in Cedar sinai uh, Mount Sinai, rather, in, uh, in Florida. And she's having a little problem with her eyes, but she's going to be fine. Hi, Mom, I love you. I, I, I just do that because uh, everything she has is in my name. <laughs> and um, I'm afraid she'll get a lawyer and change that around. <laughs> now, that's a joke, Mother, because my mother's the type of woman. I don't think that's funny! Does your mother travel with you? <laughs> I'm 57. Forget about that. <laughs> I mean, if she does, you know I have a problem alone in the bathroom. I mean, <laughs> no, no, my mother used to travel with me. I know in the days in the park sunset, I think uh, long before you came to California, maybe so, but you're a very young woman. And, oh, uh, thank you. You are. And uh, I must say that uh, my mother used to travel How with young? me. How young? How <laughs> young? Don't, don't, don't push it. Uh, no, you're very young. And, you're, and you, know what, you know what I admire so much about, which a lot of people don't know? Your background in education, which, see, my daughter's going through the SAT test now in the college. You've been through that. Uh, what is that all about? Oh, it's the, the worst. And California is the worst educational system in America. You know that. The, the, wor the worst. <laughs> Melissa brought a, a, a note home from an English teacher today. Melissa can do more better work. I mean, it is... <laughs> trouble <laughs> for a minute I thought you were talking perfect English 
Of course, where I came from, see, it's very, when we're raising kids, my wife and I, we don't have a college, although I graduated from American Academy in acting, my wife went to business school, but we didn't have a, you and Edgar are both college yeah. graduates, and it must be kind of a, 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 an advantage to raise kids when you went to college. Oh, do you think so? No, seriously. Oh, what, college education doesn't do you any good at all. I am a philosophy major. I can go to the butcher, prove the meat doesn't exist. I am <laughs> Nothing. See, really? Are you serious about honestly, that? Honestly, you know what it is? You, everyone that doesn't have a degree thinks it's terrific. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those that have degrees realize it's nothing. If you're going to read, you're going to read. If you're not going to read, you're not going to read. Mm -hmm. you know? well, Especially I'm, for a woman. Funny. A woman needs a pretty face and a trick pelvis. That's all a woman needs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look for intelligence in a woman? <laughs> well, I met my wife, so you take a guess. <laughs> uh, no, no, I look, I look for a bright lady. It doesn't have yeah. to be college, but I, I think I, I would have loved to have gone to college. I really do. I think that's a great thing to, for a young man and a young lady to have a, a college background. I think it's another uh, boost on the ladder. I think it's, you know, I came from the street. Well, my college was, hey, here's your college. Hey, hey. <laughs> that's Italian for how's your family. But, uh... <laughs> I didn't have it easy, and I got news, and I, and I wish that for my kids. And my daughter will go to college, and she'll be a wonderful, uh, wonderful student. And my son will, too. They'll both be great. And you're, uh, Melissa. What is your, Melissa is, is ready? Uh, going to be 15 the end of this week. Don't give out ages and lawyers. Yeah, yeah. A lot of guys with ski masks. <laughs> anyway, uh, I... I wish uh, they'd call me. <laughs> <laughs> I did four times, but you didn't accept the call. I, <laughs> Lee Salter, your publicist, is yeah. out backstage. He was so nervous. They were all, why were they so nervous? They thought we were going to have the w World War II. And the only person, really, and Doc, I swear, without Ed here, it comes alive with you sitting there. <laughs> the whole thing picks up. You were so wise to pick him instead of Ed. When you, had, you, know, when you signed this deal and you said, I must have Doc instead of Ed, I think that was the most cleverest thing you've ever done, really. Because <laughs> this guy, he, you know, he's a spark plug. Look at the way he jumps in and keeps it rolling with those takes and those looks. I mean, I got chills just sitting next to you. <laughs> this guy's dynamite. I've been with, I was with him in New York once and watched a fly die in his face. <laughs> he's great. You're great. I love you, Doc. You're great. He's the greatest. <laughs> we'll even... work it out. We'll work it out. <laughs> Do people ever get upset with you when you're kidding? Do you ever have people that really get mad after the show and well, try to come back? Well, Joan, that's a dumb question coming from you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know and I know. We do what we do. You can't win everybody. Nobody bats a thousand. Of course, some people will say, hey, I don't find that funny. But when you stand up alone, and all we have, we don't have any refrigerator, we don't have uh, Bob Barker saying, you just won two trips to Grenada. Right. Uh, <laughs> which a guy said, I was there, it was great, it was great. <laughs> a lot of explosions, but it relaxed me. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, you, you, you stand alone and we do what we do. And uh, I got news, of course, the whole world doesn't love me, that's for sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, well, the more I think about it, the more I realize it's so foolish when they ask us as performers, do you... Uh, do people say, I don't like... I think Bob Hope, who is the greatest performer in the world today and has done so much for our country, there's somebody out there that says, I don't like Bob Hope. Me. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no, that's not true, Bob. He's sitting in his house saying, Dolores, what did he say? <laughs> uh, and, and, and George Burns is going, I gotta get a 14-year-old girl and take a hike. <laughs> anyway, uh... But it's, it's all, we create an image, and we have to do our thing, and n you can't please the world. And uh, hopefully we try to get as many people as we can in our corner. But does anybody, like, talk to them in an audience ever stand up and say, wait a second, come outside? Sure they did. But I have a lot of friends and my manager, people from Brooklyn, and nobody gets outside. <laughs> <laughs> they get to the door, and then you see them on television at some telethon going, help me. <laughs> help me. Were you always, and this is another dumb question, but I really don't know anything about you. Were you, what would you have been if you hadn't been a comedian? I would have been part of your crew. <laughs> no, had I not been a comedian, I like to think, and we all have fantasies. Yeah. I would like to think I could have been a, a darn good psychiatrist. I really do. But I realized, dealing with my own life, it is very difficult as a person for myself. But I think with other people, I can relate to other people, and I have a feel for other people, and I think I could have been 
if I lived in another world, if I come back as a moose, uh, I could be a good psychiatrist. But I got news. That's only dreams and fantasies. Right now, I'm just lucky to be here with you. Well, I'm lucky to have you here with and me. And to be with Hot Charlie right alongside her. <laughs> we'll be right back at this message of interest. So please, stay tuned. Whoa, what? My, uh, my next guest comes, uh, directly. We're a little out of order tonight because he is taping his special and he has to come over here and then he has to leave. All I can say about Don Rickles is that I've always felt that it was a shame that Martin Borman didn't live to see his firstborn. <laughs> Would you welcome, please, Mr. Don Rickles. I'm here for the rodeo. <laughs> Forgive me for my dress, uh, John, but uh, <laughs> I'm working and I, I had no idea there was going to be a wedding tonight or something. <laughs> and I'm working over at the other network and yes. I, I couldn't get dressed up for this cockamamie affair. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, a great, it's a great night. Uh, the president, Don Durgin, is, is that Don his name? Don Durgin. Don, Don Durgin. Durgin, who cares? <laughs> uh, he was in the back in the hall, walking around going, I'm the president. He told that to Re Regan, who stepped on his hand and left. <laughs> Governor Regan was thrilled. Yeah, he was very excited to yeah. see you. Why am I talking to you? I don't even like you, Joey. Why not? <laughs> anyway, now I kid about Joey. I know him yes. a lot of years. I can't wait. But, uh, <laughs> what the whole thing is, for God's sake, let me talk. Oh. Well, listen, wait a minute. Who as long me? as you're imitating me, his name is not Regan. It's Reagan. It's Governor Reagan. And once he explained that to me while I was introducing him, it was practically an insult. I call him Reagan, and he says, Jack, the next time you introduce me, it's Ronald Reagan. So I said to him, the next time you introduce me, it's Benny Kabelski. <laughs> That's my right name. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I hope I didn't spoil anything. No, for Jack, I was rolling along here. <laughs> uh, yeah. My mother would say, it's Jack Benny, keep your mouth shut. Yeah, for God's sake. George, your dear friend is in the back walking around trying to find out what the affair is about. Ah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Johnny, it's, yes, it's uh, great to see that how you, on your anniversary, you sit in a big chair and we all sit here like a group of people in a wheat field, <laughs> sitting there like King Farouk ran out of grapes. <laughs> the humility in the class, now that you mix with Freddie, your producer, I didn't recognize Freddie Dick it over. Freddie, over here where the light is. Uh, <laughs> he just sits in the stool going, I'm in charge. <laughs> uh, but, it's a, it's, a, it's a great treat, really, is, to, to be able to be with you 10 years. You know, I, I remember you started with that. You were talking about it at CBS the other day when you worked in that studio. What was the show you had then? I did a show in the same studio you're in now. Yeah. And what was the name of the show, John? Try to stay awake for this. Halsey. You can hardly wait to get back to Bel Air and go, I'm wealthy. Ah. Uh, it was called the Johnny Carson Show. It was called the Johnny Carson Show. Well, wonderful, John. You're kind of dull, so I'll talk to Ed. Ed, maybe you can put the rubber band on your ear and play Marine Corps pilot for a half hour. <laughs> you don't have to know, Jack. It's making a lot of money for him. <laughs> Isn't this great? I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Jack Benny came up in the dressing room in, in the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas, and that's the truth when I was appearing there. And you were very sweet and kind. In fact, we had dinner together. I, together, I had... Uh, my wife and I had steak, and you had, I believe, one boiled egg. And uh, he does. He watches his diet, and he came up and he said, you know something, you see, I watched you on the stage for years in the lounge in the Sahara. True, Jack, what I'm saying? And he said, you know, you came on with some of the words and the things, you see. And I said to Mary, I said, the kid's got to get killed. Because anybody, you see, that can come on that strong has got to be crazy. No, but today... Now can we hear Humphrey Bogart? No. Oh. Humphrey. <laughs> now you see why I pinch it for him? 
That was good, Johnny. It's good to see you get that poison out. <laughs> Even on your anniversary, you always got to snap at the little Jew, huh? <laughs> With the trouble in the world, oh. I'm really just neutral. Before this evening is over, there'll be more Jews on here than anybody else. <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> and by the applause, Jack, warm up the car, we're in trouble. I must say, in all fairness to you, John, it was Johnny Carson. I know you, you, you get embarrassed about this. Uh, Johnny Carson was the first guy to start me on television in, in nighttime form and uh, uh, bring my ridiculous kind of uh, format to the, to the public. And then Joey on ABC followed it up and, and kept me going pretty good. And I must say, uh, Johnny, and uh, very honestly, because my name was like, oh, here he comes, you know, and you were great. You sat at the desk and you had me on the show many times. And I say this with all sincerity. Uh, we know each other. We don't see each other that often socially. I have begged. Uh, but I don't want to sit up in the room in the nude looking at stars. He loves astrology, and he sits there in the nude going, Oh, Venus is sick. Anyway, uh, but... Uh, what? I don't know, but they're laughing. What do you care? <laughs> Why does it, look at these people. They came, they were in line all night going, move up, Al. <laughs> but I just want to say from the bottom Don, of my heart. you should have seen him on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, for 10 years, may you have 10 more, and may you be blessed, really, for being kind to me and mine and uh, my dear ones. You are Thank a good you. I know you mean that. With all of that. I know you Thank you. Now, you got to... Don really wasn't kidding about coming like this because you're in the middle of taping your special. Yes, really. I wasn't trying to be uh, cute or anything. This was, this was it. And I dropped over the other day and we did a little thing on the show. And you were delightful and I appreciate it. And I hope it's a big success for you. Well, we try hard. If you blow that one, it's Armed Forces Radio for you. <laughs> <laughs> so... Want to hear a funny line? Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thanks, Thank you. century was correct. <laughs> Thank I mean, tell it like it is. And this is a good outfit if you work on airlines. <laughs> no, she said, we, because I, I think of that, because we always meet at airports, yes. and I met your lovely daughter, Melissa, who was, at, who was on our same plane coming back from New York, and dungarees and jeans with a knapsack, and a guy with a long beard and an earring, and a ring in his nose going, I love her, I love her. <laughs> You're going to love living in Zambuta. <laughs> I never heard you talk so much. Yeah, you... Do what you do best. Play the trumpet and get off. <laughs> Ed's not here, and he's rambling off like a regular social host. Forget about it. Go to the racetrack and stay there and go, whip him, whip him, whip him. By the way, I got regards from Johnny Carson. You remember? Sure. <laughs> Sorry about the list. Uh, you made such a stink, John. You're too didn't. big. You don't need that. Forget about the list. I'm on it. Am I? <laughs> anyway, I would turn it down. I know what you get here. You don't need this. You sit with Edgar in the house. You go, here's the locks. Anyway, uh, what are you worried about this? You're a big star today. I remember when you started, you got it made. Seasons. You work every place. She worked the car. They opened the door. The late went on. She did 20 minutes in the car. Da -da 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 -da. You don't need it anymore. You're a workaholic, but relax. Enjoy. 
Go with your husband. Go to Europe. Go and enjoy. Go with Edgar. Tell him he's moving. Edgar now. <laughs> Edgar got ill. God bless him, he's well now. But he doesn't know that. Uh, twice Edgar got up and went, I'm up. Anyway, uh, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you still doing the thing with, come on, Edgar, try to get the medicine. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, he's a wonderful man. And it's good to see you. And it's good to see you. And we're both married the same amount of time. Right. You tell me you have your 20th anniversary coming up, and so do we. Right. That's yes. right. Wonderful. I'll blow out a candle. <laughs> so uh, what did you do about it? On the wedding night? No, no. On the 20th anniversary, we went to Paris. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> Naturally. Where's the Jew going to go in? See, you know? <laughs> uh, and the wife sat there in Paris and said, I'll have that, I'll have that. I said, I think I'll buy a pair of socks. She went, you don't need that. <laughs> uh, that was my middle name. You don't need that. And, and you go, we went with the Newharts, who are my dear friends, as you know. And, you know, and they're very, they're very, they're not, they're not Jewish minded. You know what I'm saying? Barbara has to teach them how to buy. You know, yeah. Bob goes, I, 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 and the guy says, it's sold. <laughs> and, uh, it's 20 minutes, and the wife keeps saying, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, and she's learning. Like you and Edgar, you know. Well, not Edgar so much, because he's a laid back guy, too. We both married opposites. Kind yeah. of thing. That's why we're happy. <laughs> Can you imagine him? <laughs> I got the wife on the wedding night, just laid there and went, zippity do da <laughs> I got a Jewish princess. Your daughter, Melissa, is a doll. So is yours. Thank you, Mom. Mindy. My Mindy is yeah. terrific. And we met her on the plane, and she was a lovely... Because we, okay, we always You were coming back from London, right? Yeah. So well, you you we went to did... Paris and London. Yeah. Well, sure, we could afford it. Well, uh... Uh... <laughs> You're putting it in your piggy bank. You've got to spend it, Joe. <laughs> you can't keep working at the beauty parlor saying, fix me, fix me, fix me. <laughs> I mean, you're a beautiful lady. <laughs> but I must say... Uh, no, you, you, you know what? We're both. I'm not a handsome man. And, well, let's But we both... We try. That's right. We try to look good. look your best. You yes. know what I'm saying? So what are you trying to do with yourself? Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, I, I, I lock myself in a room and hum a lot. But uh, I, I must say that, uh, you know, as, as we get older, and, and you never, you know, age is like, forget it, you know? Sure. And I read that article in TV Guide today, because I knew it was going to be on today, but I read it anyway, and it was uh, lovely. And I hear you're a workaholic. I'm the opposite. I try to figure out with my manager, Joe Scandori. I have an Italian manager who's not here tonight. He's in uh, Salerno. Italy <laughs> <laughs> on a job. Uh, two sheep are missing, and they sent him to take care of them. Anyway, but I... Uh, <laughs> sit in the audience. But I... Uh... Oh, there's Edgar. How are you, Edgar? I spoke to the clinic. An hour. Anyway, uh... <laughs> No, he had bypass surgery, and they told him he was alive, and they went, and Edgar went, more, more, more. You're going to be okay, Edgar. God bless you. It's the color that worries me. Anyway, uh, oh, Edgar's the only Jew I ever met that, that doesn't live in Florida and still goes, I'm going to the pool. But he should live and be well because she went through sadness. Yeah, but he's fine now. He is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were talking about London. Where you said he's fine. I'm looking over. You probably have cataracts. <laughs> uh, cataracts to the black people, that's a Jewish sailboat. Uh, okay, read the commercial and we'll get out of here. All right. Tonight. Tonight. The Tonight Show. Welcome to so New Spons. <laughs> With bad, no, solid antiperspirant. Get out of my The mind. difference Be is the dryness. Oh. We are back. <laughs> Talking with John Nichols. Now you said, and I don't want to, you know, be rude. You said on the plane you came with Melissa and mm. how nice Melissa was. Melissa said you sat the whole time the plane was scared to death. No, not really. I'm not. I'm not a knuckle flyer. Melissa was a misinterpreted. I, well, I fly. My wife and I. We had an experience. The New Hearts, who we travel with all the time, and it's great to be able. Uh, Doc, do you go to Europe at all? Okay, yes. When? <laughs> uh, the last time I understand you made a big trip to Chatsworth in a station wagon. Uh, but ah, uh, 
You went to Europe. You don't even know what Europe's all about. <laughs> Johnny goes to Europe, and you work that jazz joint, and we missed you by a week. But anyway, the point was you said about flying. We're not knuckle fly. Are you a knuckle flyer? I hate to fly. Well, it I doesn't bother us. When we fly, Barbara and I, or she opens up a book, I open up the sports page because Newhart's big joke with me is guy can't read, he doesn't understand. He's five big beta kappa, you're a you're five beta yeah. kappa also. I'm from uh, Newtown High School and I studied fence. <laughs> uh, how to get over the fence and not show up. Which I'm not proud of, but I wasn't a great student. But I, I worked hard at it. But anyway, I worked hard enough to be a great student. Anyway, so when we were flying, we came in and we had a pull up, one of those uh, pull up jobs. And the airport was crowded and the pilot always says, they always relax you and they give you like, uh, there's no problem. Uh, we're pulling up about 3,000 feet because we just missed a jet. <laughs> and we're going to pull up and everybody relax. Newhart was on the floor going, <laughs> and the wife was laying on top of him and they weren't having sex. Uh, and they were praying, look at that, $7,000 pants <laughs> for a $300 check. Is that what I get? <laughs> Blew the whole pants. Anyway, so uh, we are not knuckle flyers. We just sit back and relax and, and, and enjoy. And we love yeah. the food and the booze and so forth. But you don't, when you relax and you just put a beach ass, you don't, you don't look at me. Are you from me. the government? Look at this, officer, you came a cop. You bought a beach house. No, we bought a bungalow in Rockaway. That's what we bought. I don't see you. Rockaway, you know that. That's how I started. Three rooms and we had a shower outside. And my uncle, who was a normal man, kept going, because it was open and he could look in. <laughs> and in those days, they didn't know about gays. Anyway, uh, but it was a long story. They, what? You don't look like a beach person to me. Why do you always do this? I, I always get the feeling she's trying to catch something. <laughs> uh, no, I am a beach person. I really am. My wife is too. She sits out in the sun. Well, what does she have on her mind? Uh, she just lays on the deck going, the Jew's making it more sun, more sun. More sun. That's my name, the Jew's making it. That's an Indian name for, you better come up with the money. Every day. And uh, we have a wonderful relationship. Once in a while I make love and most of the time.